things that are happening on the roadways, there's one guy we usually turn to. Absolutely, Mark Lowe, director of <laughs> our Iowa Department of Transportation, stopping by this morning. Good morning. Because we are talking the roads a lot right now with uh, flooding in various mm -hmm. parts of the state. So we're just kind of looking at the most recent conditions and how we can kind of stay on top of that. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, right, right now our focus is still primarily on the western side of the state, which is not to say that we're not seeing things on the eastern side of the state as well. Right. But the western side of the state has really been hardest hit at this point. Good news, I think, is when we start to look at sort of the Boyer, Nishnabotna areas, areas where we had problems yesterday, those rivers are actually starting to come down, so we're starting okay. to see some roads reopen and get some relief there. Our biggest concern moving forward is really the, the, the Missouri River, uh, because it's not only runoff that we're seeing just from what's happening in Iowa, but they're releasing uh, increasing amounts of water from South Dakota through the Army Corps of Engineers from water that's moving down from, from all of those northern states. And so, uh, you know, Typical flow is about 27,000 uh, cubic feet per second. They moved that up to 60,000 cubic feet per yeah. second. And, and what we're worried is about how much water then comes into that in addition to what they're, what they're releasing. So we're not only worried about what's going to happen in the next couple of days, but next several weeks we're going right. to continue to be watching that. Wow. So the roadways, I think, especially when they get covered like this, we thought we had some uh, problems with the roads coming apart before. When they get covered with water, that's really when we start having problems. Yeah, that's, that's where we worry about. And it depends on the way the water's, water's moving. When you get water kind of backing up at sea, and just overtopping a little bit, we're probably going to be fine. We have water really moving rapidly across it, then we start to worry about what we call scour and erosion, and you're worried about the roadbed and the, and the road surface uh, over the top of it. So, wow. so yeah. those are some of the long-term concerns we're going to have from And that. the longer that road stays under the water, too, increases those. Exactly, exactly. Can we talk about protocol of shutting down a yeah. roadway, how you make those decisions, and how we can, you know, besides watching our program and staying on top of here, uh, how we can stay on top. So if we're trying, mm -hmm. I'm going to Northwest Iowa yep. this weekend, and I'm calling my mom, I'm like, which way can I come into town? Because literally the town of Cherokee is flooded right, right now. Right. So how can we stay on top of that? Yeah, so one, one thing, you mentioned our you mentioned our 511.org, yeah. and that has all the, all the most recent closings on the state system. That's actually an app you can put on your phone. Mm -hmm. The great thing about that app is that when you're driving, you can tell it I'm a driver. It, it will it will talk to you, so you don't have to look at it, but it'll tell you if things are coming that are in your oh, way. But, really? it will. but you can but you can see all the road closings. You can see what the detour routes are on that. You can drill into those and see, see what, what detour exists. You can even get images of what's going on there. So I highly recommend people to use, to use that app. Uh, in terms of how we make the decisions, yeah. we really have we have a number of things going on. We've got boots on the ground because our folks know our roads and they know what areas they should be watching, so we're out putting eyes on those roads. We also have an excellent team of hydrologists and meteorologists that are really working with information from the National Weather Service, uh, ri river gauges, all those types of things, and they're really predicting very well for us uh, where we have issues, when those issues are going to hit, and, and when we expect those to resolve and what, we, what the impacts look. So, so we're having ongoing uh, you know, sort of situation calls where we're getting advice from those folks, and so so it's a combination of those folks on the ground and what we're predicting, uh, making those decisions on road closures. I think the two things I tell you is in areas where we have, where we just have water sort of coming up to the road, mm -hmm. then the decision is really, is there water over the road or not? And is it safe to move vehicles through there? In areas where we've got levees around the road, then sometimes the decision is we're closing proactively. That's what you saw us do in 680, what we call North 680 yesterday. So from 80 over to Loveland. Um, that's where we're worried that if that water overtopped the levee and the levee breached, it would move so fast that the vehicles who were in that area would become trapped and would not be able to escape that. So, so we actually proactively closed that to make sure we weren't putting yeah. anyone at risk. That okay. being said, if we see those signs that say, uh, do not pass, so what is your recommendation to those yeah. drivers out there? Do not pass. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Obey just the signs. Sure. Yeah. It's, I mean, you know, the things that people don't realize is, is it just takes a couple feet of water to move your car off the road. Once you move your car off the road, there's, you know, all bets are off. Right. And, and you're also talking about very cold water, so now you're at risk of hypothermia. That's true. And the other piece is you don't know what's underneath that water, so that roadbed may or may not be there. So what you think is safe water to drive through may, may not. That's a very so. valid point. Yeah, it may look just like a, a clear surface, a flat surface, but you get there, there's nothing there. Right, right. Wow. Unbelievable. Okay. Well, thank you to everything that you and your team yeah. are doing right now to make sure we are staying safe. Remind us that app once again. 511. Okay. Just, just look for Iowa 511. You can find it at the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. It's a fantastic app. And okay. it's great for winter, too, because it does the same thing. It'll tell you where all the plows are, what the road conditions are. You can see. Do I know yeah. what the we don't want to hear yeah. about yeah. winter yeah. anymore. Well, <laughs> I know. I don't either. No don't more plow talk. Winter. No, I no don't either. Plows. Okay. All right. I don't Already. either. Yeah. Thank you for joining us this yes. morning. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. It is